And then they just like take them somewhere, take them to court. And then they like, okay, it was happening a lot and they needed guidance. Because at that time they didn't have anybody who went to school here or who, who knew the system at that time to help them with. So together, organizing weekly meetings and then monthly meetings until they come up with this organization. And by the way, it, the name the, the name wasn't uh, Senegalese Association in America, ASA. It was national, like right? it was Senegalese Association National, like right? National Association of Senegalese in America. It's um, in 2004 when we were trying to get our 501c3 status with the federal government that we talked to the national because it was um, at the same time also recognizing for us. Because if you go to Senegal at the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, this ASA organization established um, the, uh, in terms of like the association existing in the Senegalese diaspora. And uh, when you go there, they always take reference to the Senegalese Association in America. Let's say a friend of mine, they're part of the uh, Senegalese Association in Italy, they always go to the foreign ministry in Senegal and they say, hey, go look into what people, folks in America do and then how they do it. So we have, we have this thing. But it was out of pure need of gathering, being together, and then helping each other that they, they came up with uh, this organization. Yep. I think you said that the government in Senegal and you are very associated, but in like smaller communities in Senegal, do people know that there's like a safe place to come here in America? Not in the in the central part of the country, but like in the, in the capital city. Because remember, a lot of the folks here, usually when they go back home and they're trying to build their houses or they're trying to start with their own businesses, they do it in the capital city, which is the car. Um, and they know, they know a whole lot of what, what's happening here. Yes, uh, a lot of people know the existence of ASA. Yep. Um, does your organization hold a lot of fundraising events, or do you just rely on funds from your members? We do a lot of fundraising. I mean, the reason being sometimes, let's say it's the end of the month, and then, you know, we don't have the funds necessary to pay our rent or to pay like, the bills we have. We have a we have a, our our assistant right there, and he's a weekly. We need sometimes to do fundraising for that purpose. Yes, we do a lot of fundraising, and also we do a lot of fundraising when we have unfortunately death in the community or somebody who is in trouble with the law or somebody like all the folks who decide now that it's time their time is up. They have to go back home. They don't want to. They have nothing to prove. They've been here for 20, 30, 80, 35 years. So those are the uh, occasions that we use to kind of do a lot of fundraising for them. Yeah. Are you benefiting financially from this? Like, are you making money? Do you have an income from this? Or we don't, the, unfortunately. No. Well, this is volunteer work. Uh, we've been doing it for, this is our this is our fourth year. Um, and by the way, it's like term limited, because he's gonna be done by the end of, by, by December he will be done. Yeah. And uh, you can only be a president for four two years, years mm -hmm. like, really, yeah. Two years and then one time, right? One two, time, two, two terms. Time, two, two terms, terms. Like, that's it. Each term, two years. You have to be president for like yeah. four years. Maximum and four years. Maximum four years. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, but the, um, the term is two years. After two years, you're going to go for election again. Uh, and then um, after four years, you're done. Yes. But uh, it's definitely um, uh, volunteer work. We're not getting paid for that. Nobody's getting paid except the assistant who's working and who's not, he's not part of the part of the board, board, board member yeah so he's not a, uh, an executive board but all the members the 15 member board uh, executive board and then the other um, board of directors it's free work that we do we do it for the community it's a commitment yes um, what are some of the ways you help people coming to America from Senegal like transition into like coming into Harlem and stuff well, one thing, one thing we don't do is we don't tell people how to come to the U.S. and we don't encourage people. Because, what, but what we do once you're here and then you come to the, to, to the U.S. and you come to the Senegalese Association and you need help, then we can see the type of help you need and how we can help you. We can help uh, everybody. Let's say a lot of folks who are coming from the border right now, this is the new trend. It happens right after the pandemic. We've seen a surge of the young Senegalese who are coming from the border and uh, who are getting into the country, I'm not gonna say illegally, well, but in, a, in an untraditional way. Because you cannot leave Brazil, walk through the 
Amazonian forest and then go through Mexico, I'm like they're paying and then walk through the Texas border and trying to get into the US. They will catch you, CBP is right there, the Customs and Border Protection. They put you in jail and then from jail, most of them, they apply for asylum. And uh, if you're lucky, your asylum is granted, they will let you out. And a lot of people also are being let out without an asylum being granted. So what they do is, when they come out, they just give them the paperwork. They have no idea what the paperwork is. So they always direct them to the Senegal Association. And on our end, what we can do when they come is take the paperwork and see, because most of the time when they come with their paperwork, the first thing they need is 